Stefan Zweig, November 28, 1881, February 22, 1942, was an Austrian novelist, playwright, journalist and biographer. At the height of his literary career, in the 1920s and 1930s, he was one of the most widely translated and most popular writers in the world. Zweig was raised in Vienna, Austria-Hungary. He wrote historical studies of famous literary figures, such as Honoré de Balzac, Charles Dickens, and Fyodor Dostoevsky in Dreimeister and decisive historical events in Sternstund and Der Menschheit. He wrote biographies of Joseph Fouché, Mary Stuart and Marie Antoinette, among others. Zweig's best-known fiction includes Letter from an Unknown Woman, Amok, Fear, Confusion of Feelings, 24 Hours in the Life of a Woman, the psychological novel Ungeduld des Herzens, and The Royal Game. In 1934, as a result of the Nazi Party's rise in Germany, Zweig emigrated to England and then, in 1940, moved briefly to New York and then to Brazil, where he settled. In his final years, he would declare himself in love with the country, writing about it in the book Brazil, Land of the Future. Nonetheless, as the years passed Zweig became increasingly disillusioned and despairing at the future of Europe, and he and his wife. Lotta were found dead of a barbiturate overdose in their house in Petropolis on February 23, 1942. They had died the previous day. His work has been the basis for several film adaptations. Zweig's memoir, Die Welt von Gestern, is noted for its description of life during the waning years of the Austro-Hungarian Empire under Franz Joseph I and has been called the most famous book on the Habsburg Empire. Stefan Zweig in Vienna with his brother Alfred, circa 1900 Zweig was born in Vienna, the son of Moritz Zweig, a wealthy Jewish textile manufacturer, and Ida Brettauer, a daughter of a Jewish banking family. He was related to the Czech writer Egon Hostovsky, who described him as a very distant relative, some sources describe them as cousins. Zweig studied philosophy at the University of Vienna, and in 1904 earned a doctoral degree with a thesis on the philosophy of Hippolyte Taine. Religion did not play a central role in his education. My mother and father were Jewish only through accident of birth, Zweig said later in an interview. Yet he did not renounce his Jewish faith and wrote repeatedly on Jews and Jewish themes, as in his story Buchmendel. Zweig had a warm relationship with Theodor Herzl, the founder of Zionism, whom he met when Herzl was still literary editor of the Neue Freie Presse, then Vienna's main newspaper, Herzl accepted for publication some of Zweig's early essays. Zweig, a committed cosmopolitan, believed in internationalism and in Europeanism, as the world of yesterday, his autobiography, makes clear, I was sure. In my heart from the first of my identity as a citizen of the world. According to Amos Elon, Zweig called Herzl's book Der Judenstadt an obtuse text. A. Piece of nonsense. Zweig served in the archives of the Ministry of War and adopted a pacifist stance like his friend Ramon Rolland, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Literature 1915. Zweig married Friederich Maria von Winternitz in 1920, they divorced in 1938. As Friederich Zweig she published a book on her former husband after his death. She later also published a picture book on Zweig. In the late summer of 1939, Zweig married his secretary Elizabeth Charlotte Lotta Altman in Bath, England. Zweig's secretary in Salzburg from November 1919 to March 1938 was Anna Maingast. Street named after Zweig in Laura and Harris, Rio de Janeiro a page from the Black Book. Zweig is the second to last on the page, along with his full London address. As a Jew, Zweig's high profile did not shield him from the threat of persecution. In 1934, following Hitler's rise to power in Germany, Zweig left Austria for England, living first in London, then from 1939 in Bath. Because of the swift advance of Hitler's troops westwards, and the threat of arrest or worse, as part of the preparations for Operation Silo a list of persons to be detained immediately after conquest of the British Isles, the so-called Black Book, had been assembled and Zweig was on page 231. With his London address fully mentioned, Zweig and his second wife crossed the Atlantic to the United States, settling in 1940 in New York City. They lived for two months as guests of Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, then they rented a house in Ossining, New York. On August 22, 1940, they moved again to Petropolis, a German-colonized mountain town 68 kilometers north of Rio de Janeiro. Zweig, feeling increasingly depressed about the situation in Europe and the future for humanity, wrote in a letter to author Jules Roman. My inner crisis consists in that I am not able to identify myself with the me of passport, the self of exile. On February 23, 1942, 
The Zweigs were found dead of a barbiturate overdose in their house in the city of Petropolis, holding hands. He had been despairing at the future of Europe and its culture. I think it better to conclude in good time and in erect bearing a life in which intellectual labor meant the purest joy and personal freedom the highest good on earth, he wrote. The Zweig's house in Brazil was later turned into a cultural center and is now known as Casa Stefan Zweig. Zweig was a prominent writer in the 1920s and 1930s, befriending Arthur Schnitzler and Sigmund Freud. He was extremely popular in the United States, South America, and Europe, and remained so in continental Europe, however, he was largely ignored by the British public. His fame in America had diminished until the 1990s, when there began an effort on the part of several publishers to get Zweig back into print in English. Plunkett Lake Press has reissued electronic versions of his non-fiction works. Since that time there has been a marked resurgence and a number of Zweig's books are back in print. Critical opinion of his oeuvre is strongly divided between those who praise his humanism, simplicity and effective style, and those who criticize his literary style as poor, lightweight and superficial. Michael Hoffman scathingly attacks Zweig's work. Hoffman uses the term vermicular dither to refer to a passage attributed to Zweig and quoted in 1972, though the passage does not occur in Zweig's published work. Hoffman adds that in his opinion Zweig just tastes fake. He's the Pepsi of Austrian writing. Even the author's suicide note, Hoffman suggests, causes one to feel the irritable rise of boredom halfway through it, and the sense that he doesn't mean it, his heart isn't in it. Zweig is best known for his novellas, novels, Beware of Pity, Confusion of Feelings, and the posthumously published The Post Office Girl, and biographies. At one time his works were published without his consent in English under the pseudonym Stephen Branch when anti-German sentiment was running high. His 1932 biography of Queen Marie Antoinette was adapted by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer as a 1938 film starring Norma Shearer. Spike's memoir, The World of Yesterday, was completed in 1942 one day before he died by suicide. It has been widely discussed as a record of what it meant to be alive between 1881 and 1942 in Central Europe the book has attracted both critical praise and hostile dismissal. Surviving copy of Zweig's novel A Monk Burned by Nazis Zweig acknowledged his debt to psychoanalysis. In a letter dated September 8, 1926, he wrote to Freud, Psychology is the great business of my life. He went on explaining that Freud had considerable influence on a number of writers such as Marcel Proust, D. H. Lawrence and James Joyce giving them a lesson in courage and helping them overcome their inhibitions. Thanks to you, we see many things. Thanks to you we say many things which otherwise we would not have seen nor said. Autobiography, in particular, had become more clear-sighted and audacious. Zweig enjoyed a close association with Richard Strauss, and provided the libretto for Die Schweigsame Frau. Strauss famously defied the Nazi regime by refusing to sanction the removal of Zweig's name from the program for the work's premiere on June 24, 1935 in Dresden. As a result, Goebbels refused to attend as planned, and the opera was banned after three performances. Zweig later collaborated with Joseph Greger, to provide Strauss with the libretto for one other opera, Daphne, in 1937. At least one other work by Zweig received a musical setting, the pianist and composer Henry Jollis, who like Zweig had fled to Brazil to escape the Nazis. Composed a song, Ultimo Poema de Stefan Zweig, based on Let's Discadict, which Zweig wrote on the occasion of his 60th birthday in November 1941. During his stay in Brazil, Zweig wrote Brazilian, Unland der Zukunft which consisted in a collection of essays on the history and culture of his newly adopted country. Zweig was a passionate collector of manuscripts. There are important Zweig collections at the British Library, at the State University of New York at Fredonia and at the National Library of Israel. The British Library Stefan Zweig collection was donated to the library by his heirs in May 1986. It specializes in autograph music manuscripts, including works by Bach, Haydn, Wagner, and Mahler. It has been described as one of the world's greatest collections of autograph manuscripts. One particularly precious item is Mozart's Verzeichnis alle Mena Worka, that is, the composer's own handwritten thematic catalogue of his works. The 1993-1994 academic year at the College of Europe was named in his honour. Zweig has been credited with being one of the novelists who contributed to the emergence of what would later be called the Habsburg myth. Among the dates mentioned below are the dates of first publication in German. Letter from an Unknown Woman was filmed in 1948 by Max Offels. Beware of Pity was adapted into a 1946 film with the same title, directed by Maurice Elvey. 
An adaptation by Stephen White of Beware of Pity was broadcast by BBC Radio 4 in 2011. The 2012 Brazilian film The Invisible Collection, directed by Bernard Attal, is based on Spike's short story of the same title. The 2013 French film A Promise is based on Spike's novella Journey into the Past. The 2013 Swiss film Mary Queen of Scots directed by Thomas M. Batch is based on Spike's Maria Stewart. The end credits for Wes Anderson's 2014 film The Grand Budapest Hotel say that the film was inspired in part by Spike's novels. Anderson said that he had stolen from Spike's novels Beware of Pity and the Post Office Girl in writing the film, and it features actors Tom Wilkinson as the author. A character based loosely on Spike, and Jude Law as his younger, idealized self seen in flashbacks. Anderson also said that the film's protagonist, the concierge Gustav H., played by Rafe Fiennes, was based on Spike. In the film's opening sequence, a teenage girl visits a shrine for the author, which includes a bust of him wearing Spike-like spectacles and celebrated as his country's national treasure. The 2017 Austrian-German-French film Vor der Morgenröte chronicles Stefan Spike's travels in the North and South Americas, trying to come to terms with his exile from home. The 2018 American short film Crepusculo by Clemmy Clark is based on Spike's short story A Story Told in Twilight and relocated to a quinceanera in 1980s New York. TV film La Ruelle au Claire de Lune by Edouard Molinaro is an adaptation of Spike's short story Moonbeam Alley. Thanks for watching.